We open up to an influencer's makeup tutorial. Later, we meet Janelle as she's walking to the red carpet at a cosmetic event. Janelle was named Beauty Influencer of the Year, and it's easy to see why. Janelle thanks all of her followers for their support, and next to her, Mlaya does the same on her own social media. The red carpet event ends up being about six feet long, and there are only four photographers. Is this what it's really like all this time? And it's only been a little section of the red carpet, and I thought it was a whole event. Then, Janelle's dog relieves itself on Janelle, and she runs around the corner to take care of the mess. She takes off her high heels and starts to rub the stain out of her dress when she hears her dog growling at something in a stall. She ignores the dog at first and finishes up her dress, but then she takes off her dress to really dry the stain. Suddenly, she notices her dog eating a treat that's been rolled from under the stall, and she goes over to stop her. Then, whoever's in the stall ends up snatching her dog, and Janelle goes to confront the stranger. He knocks her over with the stall door, and he ends up driving her high heel through her chin. Later, the dog killer strikes again, and news of Janelle's death makes the front page of suburbia. Meanwhile, Mia keeps racking up the followers as she makes videos saying how shook she is about the death of Janelle. So instead of doing her normal live stream, she's going to dog sit for her sister Nicole. But even her boyfriend Santi can't believe that she's going to spend time with the dog instead of her. Her friends keep sending her videos about how they need to see her, but Mia goes ahead and heads to her sister's house for the night. Once her sister leaves, she feeds the dog and heads upstairs to get settled in. Then, she gets a video message from her sister Nicole, and she thanks her for showing up to watch Chico. She finishes the video by apologizing for being so rough with her, but she points out that she's the one that had to take care of mom before she died. Even better, Nicole left a camera in the bedroom that she used for when her mom was still alive, and she randomly texts me to see why she's in the room for her memories. Obviously, that night Maya relaxes on the couch and goes through Mikkel's social media to see how much she's missed, and she gets a new friend request from a guy across the street, Kellen. Next, Mia watches as her friends play games on their live stream, and they tell her how much they miss her. As the night goes on, she really gets to see how close Tanti is getting with her friends, and she starts imagining him sleeping with Lonnie. After that, Mia starts getting pressured by Jade to come over, but she points out that she has to watch Chico. Speaking of Chico, the dog is gone, and she goes to find him. When she can't find Chico, she starts getting paranoid, and she looks up footage of the dog killer that's been terrorizing the town. Now she really starts looking for Chico. Where could this dog really go? All of the doors are shut except for two, and it didn't look like it could just bash through any screens or anything. It didn't help that she didn't actually lock the house doors when she first got there. Who doesn't lock the doors when they first get inside the house? I lock my door so much that I lock myself out just to go to the car and back. Mia starts getting paranoid, and she gets a call from Kellen across the street. He mentions that he got her number from Nicole for emergencies, and he asks if she's seen his dog anywhere. She tries to get off the phone quickly, but he keeps bringing up personal info about her and her friends. Mia gets more concerned about how much he knows, but soon he finally hangs up. Mia goes back to looking for Chico, but now she realizes that the sliding door is unlocked again and open. She steps outside to look for Chico, but all she sees is the pool. She doesn't notice the shadow of a man walking around inside. When she hears rustling in the bushes, she panics and goes back inside. When she tries to lock the door, she realizes that it's completely busted now. Does she barricade the door? Does she stand there and guard the door? No, she turns off the lights and turns her back to it. As if the problem doesn't exist, she's asking for it now. Whatever comes kinda deserves it. She hears more bustling coming from the room nearby, and she heads that way to continue her search for Chico. She gets surprised when her phone starts ringing again. It's Kellen, and he heard that she was looking for Chico. He tells her that Chico hides under the bed when he gets scared, and Mia starts to wonder when he got so close to Nicole and Chico. Then he starts mentioning her friends again. While she searches under the bed, he calls Lanie, just as Jade texts her about taking Santi from Mia. You know how I usually say that movies are slow burners, not this one. Technically, it is since nothing's really happened, but all of this filler buildup is all over the place. The lights turn off in the bedroom, and when Maya turns them back on, she finds blood smeared all over the wall. Of course, as soon as I complain about nothing happening, it happens. Then she hears a dog barking on Kellen's side of the phone, and he tells her that he has a dog. Nia heads downstairs while calling 9, 1, 1, and Kellen texts her to hang up. The operator finally comes on and Kellen warns her that he'll kill her friends if she doesn't hang up. 
He sends her pictures of her friends, and he tells her that if she calls anyone or leaves, they'll die to really make the point sink in. Jade calls and confirms that he has her. Kellen calls back to establish some ground rules, like answering the phone when he calls and not getting help. Suddenly, someone taunts Mia by having Chico stand in the door, and he has her choose between Lonnie and Chico. Mia ends up choosing Lonnie, and Kellen tells her to go back inside. Lonnie was trying to steal her boyfriend. I would have picked Chico. Mia's scared to go back inside, but for inspiration, Kellen sends her a video of Nicole being held captive too. When Maya finally goes inside, she finds a trail of blood leading to Chico's leash, but then she hears barking coming from upstairs. When Kellen calls, he tells her to answer three questions to let everyone go, but if she gets one wrong, she has to choose between Nicole and Santi. The first question is, what song do you sing while doing CPR? Who doesn't know that by now? The next question is, what is considered to be a fever? That one kind of stumped me. Kellen gets dirty when he gives her the last question. He asks her what her mother's last words were. That's dirty, obviously she doesn't know the answer, and Kellen has her choose between Nicole and Lonnie. In the end, she chooses Lonnie again, and Lonnie video calls her to laugh at her decision. So, these are the worst friends in the world. Lonnie, Santi, and Jade were behind all of this. They're in the attic and the empty house next door, coordinating all of this. If you've got friends like this, leave them. Lonnie's been the mastermind behind everything, and she explains that she did it all for her followers. She even used a voice changer app to play as Kellen. Mia hangs up on her after hearing all of this, and she gets a text from Jay saying that they're coming over. Mia hops online, and she finds posts that Lonnie put up of everything she's doing tonight. She even finds a video of Lunny at her mother's funeral, and she notices that this is how she got the video footage of Nicole crying. Maya tries to call Nicole, but it goes straight to voicemail. Then she heads up to the kitchen to find a paper with emergency numbers, and she calls the hotel that Nicole is supposed to be checking into. Sure enough, Nicole is safe and sound. What kind of movie is this? It's halfway over, and every bit of tension we've built up has obviously been for nothing. Nicole starts asking where Chico is, and after Maya lies about that, she tells her that she knows about Lonnie, Santi, and Jade being in the house, and she keeps getting notifications from the camera in Mom's room. After hanging up with her, Mia calls out to the group again, but this time, when Lonnie calls from the attic, she warns her that she has to get out of the house. Mia doesn't believe anything, and she still doesn't believe it when she gets killed suddenly. Santi calls Mia to try and explain what's happening now isn't part of the joke, and Jade even sends her proof of it. Maya doesn't believe Santi, but soon she hears a splash come from the pool. When she turns the lights on, she finds Lonnie lying lifeless in the pool. She believes it's real after she flits her over, and she runs back inside. Wait, so now there's a new killer. This turns out to be Kellen, and he thinks that they were playing the game wrong before. I don't believe it has to be Nicole. Mia goes into the living room and finds a box full of hypodermic needles. The new Kellen tells her to inject herself with all of them or Santi will die. Once the countdown starts, Mia grabs the first needle in, and she actually does it. After the first needle, the others seem to be a lot simpler, and she ends up doing four at one time to make sure she finishes before time runs out. The last needle is broken, though, and she ends up running out of time. Mia runs up to a room where Santi was hiding, and she breaks the handle to get in. Once inside, she finds him dead, and she lets out a horrified scream. I don't trust anyone at this point. I'd still think that this was all an elaborate hoax. Suddenly, Jade calls Mia, and she mentions that they only agreed to do this because Lonnie offered them a lot of money. Then, Kellen sends them a group video message that shows Lonnie admitting that she has no money after all. Mia grabs a pair of scissors before venturing through the house, searching for Kellen, and she texts him to follow the sound of his notifications. The sound leads her to her old closet, and she finds another body wrapped in plastic. This one is her mother, which means it has to be Nicole. She was the caretaker. There's even a whole setup on a laptop where someone was watching everyone in the house. Nicole shows up at the front door, and she admits to everything. Mia calls her so that they can talk, and Nicole sends her footage of her when she smothered their mom. Mia can't believe what she's seeing, but Nicole tries to explain that by the end of her days, their mother wasn't the same woman anymore. Mia can't believe that Nicole did any of this, but then Nicole points out that she actually chose Lonnie over her earlier. Nicole admits that the only part of the evening that she had planned was the fake part, but when Maya still lied about not knowing where Chico was, Nicole really lost it. 
Finally, Mia asks Nicole where Jade is, and Nicole gives her five minutes to break her own legs so she can feel what she feels like living with the same sickness that their mother had. Okay, so Nicole is the only character that has any depth in this story. She's not a good character, but she's the only one that isn't two-dimensional. The footage on the laptop cuts over to Nicole holding Jade hostage, and Mia gets started breaking her own leg. Just then, the Uber driver that she called pulls up front, and Nicole warns her that she better send him away. Mia sends him away just in time, and she manages to break one of her own legs with a bat. Nicole points out that she had to break both, and Mia tries jumping from the second story to finish the other one. Nicole comes out and checks her legs to find that only one of them is actually broken. Nicole can't believe that she went through all of this for her crappy friends, but she points out that it's too late for Jade anyways. Nicole is surprised that Mia could be so selfless, but she wishes that she would have been that way for her instead. What about Chico? Is the dog okay? At this point, Chico's the only potential survivor. Nicole lays next to Mia, and she admits that she used their mother's pension to set this up. She admits to killing all of the dogs too to set this whole thing up, and she can't believe that she didn't pick her to save over Lonnie. Nicole believes that Maya wouldn't be there to take care of her when she's as sick as their mother was, and she feels like tonight has only confirmed things for her. Mia points out that she did all of her tests tonight, but Nicole points out that she did them for the wrong people. With that out of the way, Nicole thinks that it's time for both of them to check out, and she pulls a revolver out. Suddenly, they hear Chico outside, and Nicole points out that she left him in his crate outside. Yay, Chico lives. At least I've got that happy ending to keep me going. Someone knocks on the door, and Nicole warns Mia to stay silent. When Nicole answers the door, we get to meet the real Kellen, and he points out that he found him in the backyard. When he looks down, he sees the trail of blood, and Nicole tries to convince him that she simply spilled a bit of paint. He asks her how Maya's doing, and he really wants to meet her. Nicole tries to say that Mia went home, but Kellen notices that her car is still here. Nicole's the worst liar ever. She can keep a poker face well enough, but she's not good at coming up with stories. Even she's getting tired of her stories failing, and she shoots him. When Nicole turns back to handle Mia, she finds her gone, and Mia's managed to shut the power off. Now, it's Mia's turn to be Game Master. Maya tells Nicole to check her social media profile, and Nicole sees Mia telling all of her followers what happened. When she says that she's going to kill Chico, Nicole goes into the kitchen to try and stop her, but Mia gets the drop on her. This whole time they're live, and the followers watch the two of them fight it out. Eventually, Mia smacks Nicole's head against the coffee table, and she hobbles over to the walker by the front door before leaving. Mia calls Chico over, and the two of them limp over Kellen's body. They make it to the sidewalk, but Maya falls over. Chico runs off down the street, and soon, the Uber driver shows back up. Ready for this ending, the Uber driver named Big Mike asks Mia if she's Mia, and Mia says nope. Then, back inside, the live stream continues streaming, and the followers get to see Nicole pop up at the last second, still alive. Then the credits roll. This movie tried so hard to be the next psychological whodunit crime thriller, but it was so disorganized that it hurt to watch at times. The acting wasn't bad at all, honestly, but it tried so hard to be something that it wasn't. If this is your kind of movie, give it a shot. Otherwise, you're not missing out on much. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment on what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.